So let's start by just thinking about the hamburgers. If you buy 100 hamburgers, how much money did you spend? Did you spend 100 plus $2, 100 minus $2? No, you spent 100 times $2. So the amount of money you spent on hamburgers is H times 2. And how much do you spend on bacon burgers? Well, $4 each, so each of them costs you $4, so B times 4. And overall, if you buy hamburgers and bacon burgers, you have to add up to get the total cost. And that's how problem one goes. They probably have the numbers in front of the letters, which is typical in algebra. But that is your answer. Square root of 3 times square root of 13. For this problem, we have to remember one of our square root rules, which is when you are multiplying two different square roots, you can combine them and just multiply on the inside. Square root of 3 times square root of 13 is square root of 3 times 13, which is 39. And that is our answer. For this problem, we just need to plug in the x and the y that they give us. So 3x squared becomes 3 negative 2 squared. 2xy becomes 2 times negative 2 times 3. Minus 3y squared becomes minus 3, 3 squared. And then we just start working out. Exponents go first. What's negative 2 squared? Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Three squared, three times three is nine. Then we do the multiplying. Three times four, that's twelve. Two times negative two is negative four. This three just comes straight down. We haven't done anything with it yet. Three times nine, that's twenty-seven. We still need to do more multiplying. Four times three, that is twelve. And now we do all the addition and subtraction. 12 minus 12 is 0. And 0 minus 27 is negative 27. And that is how you evaluate an expression. If we want the area of this shaded region, we need to look at the big circle minus the little circle, because that's what their area is. It's everything that's in the big circle minus this little circle. So the big circle, they told us, had radius r, which means its area is pi r squared. Then the little circle, they told us its radius is r minus 1. So it's pi r minus 1 squared. And we have to subtract those. And that is all you needed. To start this problem, you need to remember, what does squared mean? Squared means times itself. So we need 3x minus 4y times itself, times another 3x minus 4y. And then when we have something like this times something like that, we need to use the FOIL process on it. First, outside, inside, last. Our first pair is 3x and 3x. 3 times 3 is 9. x times x is x squared. On the outside, we have 3x and negative 4y. 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. x times y is xy. On the inside, minus 4 times 3 is minus 12. y times x is xy. You generally put letters in alphabetical order. For the last pair, take the last of each of them. Minus 4y times minus 4y is positive 16y squared. And once we foil it out, we want to combine like terms. Our only like terms are these xy's in the middle. So that gives us 9x squared. Minus 12 and minus 12 combines to give you minus 24. And that's still a plus 16y squared there. And that is that answer.
When this problem says if x is greater than 3, that's basically just them saying that this is not a trick question that we're not ever dividing by 0. So if it confuses you, just ignore it and work out the problem the way that you usually would. In order to simplify this, we need to start by factoring it. And before we can factor it, let's write it a little bit better. So on top, if you've got just a plain old x, that's the same as 1x. And if you don't have any x's at all, that's the same as having 0x's. And now we have to factor both of these. So to factor, we need to think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 6 and add up to be positive 1. So to multiply to be 6, that could be 1 and 6, or it could be 2 and 3. Which of those could give us a 1? Well, that would be 2 and 3. To give us that positive 1, we would need positive 3 and negative 2. Those two numbers multiply to be the minus 6 at the end, and they combine, they add up to be the plus 1 in the middle. So the top is x minus 2, x plus 3. And on bottom, we need two numbers that multiply to be negative 9. So that could be 1 times 9, or that could be 3 times 3. And they have to add up to give us a 0. So that would be 3 and 3, specifically negative 3 and positive 3. So that's x minus 3, x plus 3. And there is a faster way to do that, but this will work too. And then from here, we need to see is there, if there is anything top and bottom that will cancel out. x plus 3 cancels out. We have it on top and bottom of the fraction. And what's left over is the answer. On this problem, we can see that we've got a minus and a negative right next to each other, both affecting that 7 there. When these two are right next to each other, that's like multiplying. And when you're multiplying two negatives, they just turn into a positive. So that's 3 plus 7 over negative 2. And then working on the top, what is 3 plus 7? It is 10. And then we divide. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Multiplying or dividing, if you've got one negative, your answer is negative. And that is your answer. To solve this problem, we need to start by simplifying all this stuff on the left. The first thing we can do when we have a number right next to a parentheses like that, we can distribute the negative 2 out. So we multiply negative 2 times x, which gives us negative 2x, and negative 2 times negative 2, which gives us positive 4. The 3x didn't change, and the equals 8 didn't change. From here, we can combine like terms. 3x minus 2x is 1x, or just plain old x. And then to get this x by itself, we need to get rid of this plus 4. So we subtract 4. 4 minus 4 cancels out. 8 minus 4 is 4, and 1x is just a plain old x. And that is our answer. On this problem, we want to start by working out the insides of the parentheses. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 4 minus 5, there are different signs. The 4 is positive, the 5 is negative, so you subtract. 5 minus 4 is 1. And the bigger number was negative, that 5 was negative. So that's a negative 1. Everything else, that minus, that 3, that negative 2, they all stay the same. From here, you multiply. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. And then 2 plus 3 is 5. Now you might be wondering, how come we didn't distribute like the last problem? Well, we could have, but it would have been a lot harder. Here we can actually just subtract and figure out the parentheses. If you can do that, distributing would only make it harder.